when you stop introducing food or nutrients into your digestive system. That's when the fast begins. The fast ends when you reintroduce food and nutrients. We've been talking about fasting. This is the third in a series that we've been doing on fasting. So I hope that you've been joining us, you've been participating, possibly even planning on uh, how to do these, because we can get good at this. We can get good at fasting. It's just another discipline that's been given to us that can help us increase in the things of God. We've previously established in the other two messages that you should fast. Matthew 6, 16, Jesus said, when you fast. He didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast, which means by implication that it's not an if we're going to fast, when you fast. And then uh, Jesus said in Mark 2, 18, he said when we would fast. When was that? When he would go away. He said there'd be a day when he'd be taken away. And when he's taken away, that would be a day in which the disciples would fast. What day are we in? We're in that day. We're in the age of the Holy Ghost, the dispensation of the Holy Ghost where Jesus isn't here, but the Holy Ghost is here. And that is the day when Jesus said we would fast. So in our day, in our discipline, we are to include fasting as part of our discipline and our way that we walk with God. And if we do those things, then we'll be able to increase and go farther than we could without it. In fact, I said this both other times, in fact, you won't be able to walk with the Holy Ghost in this dispensation in the way that you should, as effectively as you should, without this discipline of fasting. Well, I don't like that. Who does? But you can get better at it. You can get better at the discipline of fasting. You can know how these things operate and get good at it. So you're not going to be able to do it as a, you're not going to be able to walk with the Holy Ghost as effectively without fasting, and you won't be able to participate in the open rewards that you're promised without that discipline of fasting. All right? We've previously established those at more at length in the other two episodes. We've also established that this is one of God's chosen methods. He chose this method of fasting in order to get you to be able to go someplace that you couldn't go without it. So we need to choose to go in God's way that he chose for us. Now, this would be foolishness to some. I mean, you bring up the, you talk about fasting to some people, they think it's completely ridiculous, completely foolish. Well, preaching is foolishness to those who don't understand. Fasting is foolishness to those who haven't been there and know how to get there and do it. Anyway, it's God's chosen method. You know, and many times if you're going to follow God, you'll look like a fool to some people. Well, in the end run, in the long run, we come out ahead. All right. So let's look at uh, Daniel chapter 10. What I'd like to cover this week is what fasting is not. Now, sometimes you need to, in order to establish what a certain thing is, it's best to go and establish what it isn't. Because so many people have so many ideas about what fasting is or isn't, and they, oh, this is what I do, and this is what I do. Well, I really don't care what you do. What does the Bible say? So we're talking about biblical fasting, the way to do it the way the Bible says. If you want the Bible results, you got to do the Bible method that God chose. Otherwise, you aren't going to get the Bible result. So, what fasting isn't? Let's look at Daniel chapter 10. And this is one of those verses of scripture that people like to use to, uh, to come up with a way that they can fast uh, without having to stop eating food. Again, there's really no way that you can fast, and believe me, I've tried every way you could possibly think of to eat a little something, you know? But if, if you're eating something, you're not fasting. And we'll, we'll get into this. Uh, Daniel chapter 10, and let's look at verse 2. In those days, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Now, three full mourning, here we understand he's talking about fasting. Other translations talk about that, and he, he'll tell you in a second that that's what he means. 
When he says three full weeks, it means it was the fullness of those three full weeks. He could have said, I was in mourning or I fasted two full days. Well, two full days would mean that he was fasting for those two full days. Not, you know, at the end of the day, he ate a little something, and the next day he ate a little. Then it would have just been, well, I fasted uh, almost a whole day. Well, that's not what this is saying here. Let's read it again. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Well, how many days is that? Three weeks, seven, seven days in a week, that's 21 days. So Daniel was fasting, didn't eat for three full weeks, 21 days, right? How did he know it was three full weeks? Well, he counted the days in which he didn't eat. And oh, the combined total of, uh, he added one week to the next week to the next week, not eating any, any of that period of time. So it was 21 days in which he didn't eat. Let's read on. I know this sounds, you know, people go, oh, that sounds ridiculous. Well, you know, Everybody wants a little wiggle room, and if I leave a little wiggle room, they're going to come up with some way to say that they did a full fast of a certain amount of time when the reality is they didn't. They did something else. Let's read verse 2 again. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no. And this is where the key is. He ate no. No, he ate nothing. He ate zero things. And so if, if you're going to say, I, I fasted three days, that means from the beginning of the, the day that you began fasting till the end of the third day, you ate no. Biblical fasting, I ate no. But, you know, people will go, well, they take this one next word here and they try to say that they could eat a little something. Believe me, you know, there's your, your mind is always going to try to come up with some way that you could eat something during that and then include that into the three full. Let's look at here. How do you know this? <laughs> you got to know who you're talking to. I've tried to come up with every possible way you can think of, but it doesn't qualify as a biblical fast. Verse 3, I ate no pleasant bread. Ah, ah, see, 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 he didn't eat any pleasant bread. So he ate the unpleasant bread. That's what love, people love to imply that is that, and this is where they come up and they'll even, they'll call it this. You can read books on it. The Daniel Fast. And when you see somebody talking about the Daniel Fast, they're talking about a fast what they call a fast, in which they just don't eat pleasant things. And most of them mean they just eat vegetables. Well, I got news for you. Vegetables are pleasant. Right? They're like, oh, I don't eat any meat for those three, for, you know, for three weeks I didn't eat any meat, but I ate vegetables and some bananas. Well, I got news for you. You didn't fast. Don't call it a fast. That is simply calorie restriction. That is simply a diet. Fasting isn't when you say, oh, I'm not going to eat this. Oh, I fasted chocolate for a whole year. You fasted for a whole year? How are you alive? Well, no, you just stopped eating chocolate. You didn't fast. Fasting is when you stop putting food in your mouth to when you start putting food in your mouth. Why do you have to be so adamant about that? Because there's so many people that are going to try to come up with some way to say they're biblically fasting when they're not. They're simply kind of, they're trying to put something else in there. I ate, this says, I ate no pleasant bread. And really that word means desire. It means he desired bread, but he didn't eat it. For three, I mean, I guarantee you over the course of three full weeks, you're going to desire to eat some bread. Well, you have a desire for some food, you didn't do it. The point is, I ate no. No bread. And then he goes on, neither came flesh into my mouth, nor wine into my mouth. I ate no, neither, nor. So he ate all of those things. No, neither, nor. So as much no you want, and as much neither as you want, and as much nor as you want, have that, but you can't have any food. Welcome to fasting. But you can have as much water as you want. It's a wonderful thing. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself, till the three whole weeks were fulfilled. So he ate nothing, no, neither, nor, for three full weeks, until... It was fulfilled, then he ate some pleasant bread. 
right? Okay, now a lot of people would like to apply this to what the children of Israel, um, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, remember them? Let's just flip back there real quick. Uh, Daniel chapter 1. And let's look at uh, verse 8. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. But I, Daniel, purposed this in my heart, that I would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. See, now people are going to try to interpret what happened in D Daniel chapter 10 with what happened in Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, but they're two completely different things. In, one, in D Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, he was fasting in Daniel, in Daniel chapter 8. 1 verse 8, he was just trying not to defile himself with food that was offered unto idols, right? Okay, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Verse 9, but God had brought Daniel into favor with tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord, the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces likened to the children which are of, of your sort, and then shall make me endangered of my head to the king? I know I'm reading this fast, but, you know, i got to get through this. Verse 11. Then said Daniel to Malzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mish Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Okay. A Daniel fast, what they would say, oh, this is a Daniel fast. They just eat pulse and water, meaning pulse, and we know that that's vegetables. Just let us eat vegetables and drink water. That's not a fast. That's simply eating vegetables and drinking water. Then let, verse 13, then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children of the... Uh, that eat the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented with them in this matter and proved them ten days. Verse 15, and at the end of the ten days, their countenance appeared fatter and fairer in flesh than all the children that did eat the meat of the king, the king's meat, the portion of the king's meat. They got fatter. They put on weight. I've got, I'm telling you that when you fast, you don't put on weight. They were not fasting. They were just trying not to defile themselves. And I've got news for you. There's plenty of scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, if you were under the law, where God said, don't eat this. Right? But he never said that if you don't eat that, that you were fasting. Because a lot of times, well, he'll say, don't eat pork. Well, I don't eat pork, so I'm on the pork fast. Hey, what is that? That means I eat everything I want, anytime I want, but I don't eat pork, so I'm fasting. That is not a fast. It's not a biblical fast. God never calls that a fast. If he says don't eat something in the New Testament, he encourages us not to eat anything offered unto idols. Well, if I don't think eat things offered unto idols, that's not me fasting. That's just not me eating something offered unto idols. You see? They were eating, in fact, it said they were eating. They were eating pulse and water, which is a vegetable thing, probably a mushy vegetable. Sounds doesn't sound very delightful. But anyway, when Daniel was fasting, he ate no food for until the 21 days was finished. So we're trying to get across here what biblical fasting is so that we can do it in the right way. And we can go what fasting is not and what fasting is. Are you seeing this? I hope so. I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm going on and on, but, you know, these, these are the places where people have wiggle room. They, they say, well, I've been fasting uh, 10 days, but I haven't got any benefits out of it. Well, have you stopped eating food for 10 days? No, I've been eating vegetables, and, you know, you're not going to get the same benefits. It's not fasting. Fasting is when... You stop introducing food or nutrients into your digestive system. That's when the fast begins. The fast ends when you reintroduce food and nutrients into your digest digestive system. You see that? That's a biblical fast. Fasting is not calorie restriction. So, okay, I'm just going to restrict myself to a 1,500 calories a day. That's a diet. That's not a fast.
The, the Bible talks a lot about, you know, not eating certain things. So, okay, well, I'm dieting. I'm not going to eat that thing. But it's certainly not fasting. All right? Fasting begins the moment you cease putting food in your mouth, and it ends when you begin putting food back in your mouth. It's pretty simple. So if you're going to do a three-day fast, it begins when you stop putting food in your mouth, and then at the end of three days, you get to put more food back in your mouth. That's a three-day fast. Remember, Daniel said, uh, for three full weeks, I ate no. All right. Because here, you know... Uh, there's a, an is, have you ever heard of the uh, Ramadan from the Islamic Ramadan? Not a scriptural fast. What they do is they don't eat all day until sundown, at which point at sundown they have a feast. It's like having Thanksgiving every day at sundown. And they say, they say, we fasted 30 days. We fast for 30 days. I'm telling you, they're not fasting for 30 days. They're just not eating during the day, and then they binge at night. And you can eat way more calories. You can eat your 2,000 plus calories at night. That's not fasting. That's just waiting to eat. There's plenty of people who eat one meal a day. I do it all the time. You get busy during the day, you do stuff, and, and you just don't have time to say, ah, I don't want to get in and I'll eat later. Am I fasting? No, because I ate. You see? Just because the sun goes down. Anyways, and it's certainly not 30 days fasting. That's 30 days of eating Thanksgiving when the sun goes down. Yeah, you can put on you can put on weight with that kind of fasting. Well, you don't put on weight when you when you're really fasting. Why are you talking about it so much? Because you have to understand. You have to see. Well, I have a place I need to go here in this message today. But you have to understand what true biblical fasting is before you can do it. Right? It's not what people would call the Daniel fast. Really, all they're talking about is the Daniel diet. They're saying, oh, well, you know, there's plenty of vegetarians. There's plenty of vegetarians that have been fasting for years. In light of that, they're not eating any meat. And they're not drinking any, you know, pleasant milk. So they're, they've been fasting. Oh, my goodness. Vegetarians, they're fasting. They've been fasting since the 60s. All right. Enough of that. I hope I'm getting this across. So Daniel said, I fasted three full weeks, and we have, uh, we have plenty of uh, time, uh, time allotments in the Bible. We've got the one-day fast, we've got the three-day fast, we've got a ten-day fast, all these things spoken about in the Bible. Daniel's 21-day fast, we got Jesus, is 40, Jesus and Moses' 40-day fast. Four, so what does that mean for 40 days? That when the sun went down, he, he ate Thanksgiving? No, that means when the sun went down, he probably went to bed, right? He didn't eat until the, th until the 40 days were over. He stopped eating, he drank as much water as he wanted, and he didn't eat until 40 days were over. If it's a 21-day fast, he didn't eat until the 21 days is over. No wiggle room, no, no. Because if you wiggle, and we're, that's where we're going to get to, then you're going to take away the benefits that come to you through that period of rest. Because really what happens is your body, your whole, your, uh, your internal system that's used, so much of our energy is used to digest this food, you're, it's able to rest and your body goes into this whole different state. Anyway, fasting is not a diet. Fasting is the cessation of eating any food for a specific period of time. No food, zero food. The cessation of introducing nutrients into your digestive tract which means that your digestive tract can enter a period of rest. I hope you're getting this. Fasting is not a diet. Fasting is not calorie restriction. It's not just cutting out one kind of food. Oh, I'm fasting because I stopped eating spaghetti. It's like I said, you know, that's not a biblical fast. So it's not dieting. It's not calorie restriction. It's not one meal a day. That's not fasting. That's eating one meal a day. A lot of people do that. You know, I'm not trying to be an idiot here. I'm simply trying to draw the line at what is a biblical fast so we can follow the Bible and do it God's way and get God's results or 
we can just come up with all these goofy things and try to interpret it that we can maybe, you know, eat lettuce if we want to. I'll show you and we'll get, the more we'll get, this will make more sense as we get into this, but you need to really enter a period of rest where your body and your mind, everything could just enter into a completely different space. And if you don't do it that way, then you won't enter that place and you won't get the benefits that God chose for you to have. Hebrews chapter 4, and let's look at verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, I get it. He's talking here about entering, laboring to enter into a place of faith. Well, part of our faith now, part of our uh, the way we walk with God in the earth today, it, one of those things, those disciplines, is fasting. And it's a labor. It's work. It's something you have to strive for. It's nothing that just happens. Labor doesn't just happen. It's something you have to work at. You can get better at it. But it doesn't just happen. Let us labor or work or strive to enter into that rest. That rest that I'm talking about here is that rest that your physical body enters into when you stop feeding it food. And there's names for that. And there, you get open rewards that you don't get if you don't enter into that rest. That's the problem with reintroducing food every day is your body never able, is able to go into that place of rest. And what it does is your body begins to now convert waste in your body. Your body begins to burn up toxins, damaged cells, old cells, fat stores. It begins to take those kind of things and convert them into ketones. When does that happen? It happens about uh, about the second day, at the end of the second day for women, generally, and about the third day for men. That your body transitions over from, from using up the glucose and the food that you've been eating, and then it, it begins to convert on that third day to where your body's producing ketones, and you're in a state of ketosis. That means your body's no longer using that giant intestinal system that it uses to produce, to, to take food and, and get glucose out of your food. That just completely shuts down. And then your body begins to metabolize all of those, those bad things, those toxins, those damaged cells. It even uh, begins to eat plaque that's in your arteries, which is why most People, almost in all the studies, all the medical studies, almost 100% of the people had their blood pressure normalized at the end of a fast. God has a method for every single person to have their blood pressure lowered and normal to where they don't need any more medication for their blood pressure, and it's called fasting. But they need to enter into ketosis at the end of the third day and then stay there until their body has enough time to rid themselves of all that waste and garbage. This is God's method. But this is where you start to reap the open rewards of fasting, which is God's method. He built it into you. You just have to partake of it. That's one of the, one of the reasons why I said early on that this is like a catch-all. I mean, there's so many things that, that happens during this fast. And one of them is he makes your, your health spring forth speedily. Anyway, so he begins to clean house. Now remember, your body is not just your body. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's one of the reasons that he chose this method because he wants to clean house. Clean up his house. Get rid of all the toxin. Get rid of all the poison. And then your body can be renewed. To Your youth is renewed. And God can have a, a really good, clean, renewed body that he can live in. We'll get into more to this next week. Thank you for listening. And God bless you. Let me pray for your Holy Ghost. Thank you. These people are beginning to lighten up. And things are beginning to happen to them. And they're beginning to have a great desire to learn about the fast. And then they can go on fasts of... Uh, three days and 10 days and even some people 21 days and see the great and glorious benefits that God has chosen for them to live in. Be blessed in Jesus' name.
Chuck